for the spring. I tend to like to dress up and I like hats, so I thought it was wonderful finding a bunch of women that would actually go out in public and wear hats again. Red Hat Society members strictly adhere to the verses of a poem titled Warning that touts the eccentric excesses of growing older. The poem says, when I turn old, I'll wear a purple dress with a red hat that doesn't go, and I'll do things like sit on the curb when I'm tired and hoard pens and pencils and beer mats and things in boxes. I don't want to shock my friends when I get old and do this all of a sudden, when suddenly I am old and start to wear purple. And so I better start now. So we're starting now. But starting out in the society isn't easy because red hats are hard to find at the store. That's some of the things we do when we get together. We share how you found your hat. Some have created their hat. They had to either dye it or paint it or cover it with uh, sparklies. I feel very color uncoordinated wearing a dark suit amid this scarlet sisterhood. But the members' funky fashion statement really draws attention whenever they step out on the town. But the quizzical looks of those on the street quickly turn to grins when they encounter the purple people. You're looking at us strangely. No, we assumed you're all in some little... <laughs> I think it's our goal in life is to make people smile. And most people are very curious and they, they do smile. The women of the Red Hat Society leave a lasting impression wherever they show up. They're proving to the world that middle age, much like the red hats they wear, is a crowning achievement. With I am Kelloland, I'm Curry Grove. Now women under 50 aren't discriminated against. They can also join the Red Hat Society. They're known as wannabes and have to wear pink and lavender. The Red Hat Society will hold its first statewide convention next week in Pier. South Dakota B Baseball's defending champ open state play in Mitchell. Travis Spotsing has all the highlights next. The 10 o'clock sports with Travis Fossey. B Amateur Baseball's perennial power, Del Rapids PBR, carded its seventh state title since 1991 last summer. As the champ, they're not exactly swaggering into state play. PBR sub 500, but you can't count them out. Tonight, battling Aurora. Yummy. Thank you very much. I'll take that hamburger as well. PBR up 2 0, bottom four looking for more. One on, nobody out. Pat Schmidt rips the dribbler through to center. Jeff Welbig crosses home plate. 3 0 ball game. Dells took a 5 0 lead into the bottom of the fifth, but they started getting just a little greedy. Runner on second, Andrew Johnson. Base hit to left. Tracy Langer rumbling home. Two words, no shot. Catcher Jason Sauer applies a tag. Langer should have held up at third. But PBR pounding in the runs again, an inning later in number six. One on, one out, pitch left up in the zone, and Mick Hoagland hammers it. The two-run shot to right, and PBR pounding Aurora 10-0 the final. In the nightcap, Crofton and Lennox are tied 7-all in the seventh inning. State play continues Friday with four games at Cadwell Park, while the A-Tourney first round begins in Rapid City. Canary Baseball's bandwagon is filling fast. The scorching hot birds have won four straight on 16 second half wins, and yeah, they're contenders. Today at the Cage, a rare matinee hosting Duluth Superior. Five new Canaries in the seventh, call it a Duke comeback. Former bird Sean Murphy, the base knocked to right. Johnny Vinn scores five all after seven. It wasn't a pretty inning. Bottom eight, six five Dukes, one on, two out. Tyrone Pendergrass delivers a double off the wall in left center. The run scores 6-6. Six, six. The Birds, D, solid all day. Derek Gibson rolls into the 4-6-3 double play. End of nine. What do you say we play 11? Bottom 11, one on Felix Pagan. Ball game. The two-run rocket to left. Pagan's second home run of the day. Fourth in three games. His bat, rather flammable, gets mobbed at the plate. Birds win 8-6-11. and 11. Pagan and company have won five straight and stand one back in the North Division. Canaries play at Schaumburg, 7-20, Friday night. Twins lost in 14 Wednesday on a heel home run tonight. Seeking payback. Top one, the O's start with a bang, though. Chris Singleton, the bomb to right high deep and gone off the bleachers, 1-0. Kyle Lowe's, though, settled in. Mowing down Baltimore, Jeff Conine, take a seat. But the Twins' bats have been out to lunch lately. At the story, yet again tonight, Orioles win 3-1 your final.
Tiger Woods owns eight major championships, seven since 1999. Tiger can't win golf's Grand Slam, but three out of four isn't bad. Today, round one of PGA Championship play at Hazeltine, Chaska, Minnesota. J.P. Hayes playing nine. That's a golf shot. Birdie three, nothing but cup. Head to 17, Fred Funk playing well. Long birdie roll, and he got it. Funk and Jim Furyk tied for the lead at minus four. Not a low score, but not bad. How about that guy they call Tiger Woods on number four? All over with his driver today. The irons, though. Straight as an arrow, right onto the green, setting up birdie. Tigers at minus one, three off the pace. Not everybody got to finish, though. Rich Beam, plus one through 15. A little lightning and showers slowed things up this morning. Round three at the IIAJC National Junior Golf was washed away today in Texas. Sioux Falls, Carla Murra, out of the sand on day two, right there. Entered the day 17th overall and will tee off Friday's final round at 8.24 a.m. Thanks, Travis. Well, it's a good time to travel. The airlines are staging an old-fashioned fair war next. For news, weather, and sports online, it's Kelloland.com. The exclusive sponsor of Kelloland.com homepage and market snapshot is the First National Bank in Sioux Falls. It may pay to postpone your vacation plans until after the summer rush. Northwest Airlines is cutting ticket prices to several destinations through mid-December. Passengers are willing to take advantage of the price cut despite the upcoming anniversary of September 11th. I think more people will want to fly. And I don't know how many people are fearful of flying, but it doesn't really bother me. The economy and tourism have resulted in a 10% drop in passengers at the Sioux Falls airport. But you have to be, you have to pick certain flights. It's not an across the board, everything cuts. Sounds like you read the fine print and all that stuff. You better check it out. Yeah. yeah, it is going to be a windy day. Actually, a windy, more a windy night than a windy day. Sunny during the day, windy and stormy during the afternoon and nighttime hours as the front makes its way west to east across the area. Very strong winds, 50 miles per hour plus behind the front tomorrow night. But ahead of the front, that's where we can see those very strong to severe thunderstorms. 86 for high tomorrow in Sioux Falls and Aberdeen. 94 up here, 93 in Rapid City. And western South Dakota, a high wind watch gusts of 60 to 75 possible tomorrow late day. Mm, you see a beautiful sunset, it looks like, from the Mount Rushmore area. Yeah, it does. Just the baseball fans enjoying a very nice evening. Might Good. be a little breezy out there tomorrow. <laughs> yes, Good night. That's right. <laughs>